Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. I want to share with you something that is really neat. Um, it's about how we use the six function. Exactly how does the six function actually work in each of the 16 types? I'm going to share with you how it works for each of the 16 types. I've talked about this before in uh, previous videos, but this time I felt like I know how to explain it in, in a way that's very clear and easy to understand and also convincing because I felt like the way I've been explaining it before, it wasn't quite convincing, but I found a model by which to be able to show you um, how it works in a way that makes a lot of sense. So um, it happened last night. This is my big aha moment. And it happened because I was scrolling through this old website called personalitypage.com. It's so old, goes back to the 2000s, the double O's. And this website brings me so much nostalgia because this is the first website I've discovered on the MBTI. When I just learned about the MBTI, this was the very first website I've accessed, and the very first INFP profile that I've read, which has really rung a bell for me. So, brings back old memories. Look how old it is. Look how old it is. I'm so happy they kept this website up. So, um, before I get, I jump into this topic, I want to let you know I have uh, a video on how you could use effective reframes when it comes to challenging situations in your life um, that may, may be making you feel a bit unhappy or anxious, there's ways to reframe your life in ways that are effective. That's proven in the psychotherapy literature. And um, it's on my new channel. I'm going to put a link to it up above in this video. And check out my other videos too. I talk about... Um, very practical ways to use psychotherapy techniques in your own life to help you live a healthier and healthier life. Now let's get into this topic. So this all came to light when I was looking at the titles that they give each of the types. And I thought they use such good titles to kind of capture the essence of the type that you could actually see the sixth function in it. Because the two strongest functions of the type are actually the first and the sixth function. So if you have a word that captures the type really well, it should capture those two functions really well. So in usual MBTI terms, um, usually the strong functions are the first and second function, right? Uh, in socionics, it talks about how the sixth function is actually very strong. Um, the first and second are valued and they're strong, but six functions a very strong function. And even though this is an MBTI website, um, you're going to find that flavor of six function in it. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to talk about all the types. Um, I might make this into a two part video so I could cover all the types, but let's get started. These are often the names that they give these types. They're often um, careers, but I want you to think of these more as archetypes of the types because anybody could have any kind of career. So, for example, they call um, the ISFP here the artist, but you know anybody could be an artist. I'm an artist myself. Uh, I'm not an ISFP. I want you to think about the archetype of, of an artist. And you'll really get the picture here, the archetype of each of the types. Um, so let's start with ESTJ and also ESFJ. Um, the ESTJ is called the guardian. The ESFJ is called the caregiver. So what do you notice here? Well, obviously there is, you know, the expression of the expert thinking and expert feeling, the guardian, the person who is holding the reins at the top, right? Expert thinking, expert feeling, caregiving, like being very supportive of people. Um, what else do you see? 
you also see the infrared sensing. That's the second function because、uh, guardianship, caregiving are very SJ kind of roles. But you also see expert sensing because the guardian and caregiver, these are kind of like top dog kind of positions. They're kind of alpha positions. So you have a bit of that SP aggressor、um, personality embedded in that name. The guardian, the caregiver, the person who's kind of like the、um, the dominant type, and、um, so. But it's channeled in、um, in a very introvert sensing kind of way. So the expert sensing energy is taken into guardianship and caregiving into that introvert sensing role.、Um, to make that point clear, you compare this with the names of the ISTJ and the ISFJ, the duty fulfiller and the nurturer. You don't get that. That same kind of connotation of expert sensing that I've mentioned before, kind of like the aggressor,、uh, top dog kind of personality.、Um, you'll find that quality, that kind of that fierce quality in the ESTJ and ESFJ, but they value expert sensing, so that's why they channel it that way. And、um, so that's an illustration of how expert sensing can be found even in the name, in the archetype of the types. I just want to make a brief mention of a really cool idea. This reminds me of when I was talking with my INTP friend about the ESFJ.、Um, you can think about the archetype of the American president、um, as being an ESFJ. So, like, what an American tends to value in the in a president, especially like around like the 1950s,、um, is the idea of the alpha caretaker. So the ESFJ would be、uh, a representative of that. So even if the president is not an ESFJ, they would try to mimic the ESFJ qualities of the alpha caretaker. And what you see is that extroverted feeling is valued. So、uh, Americans really like the leader to send really positive feeling vibes, good feeling vibes, and but. Uh, there's that expert sensing in the background, like kind of like that strong man, that alpha caretaker. But they don't like that to be in the foreground. So, like another country, like Italy, they like to have a strong man as their leader. So that's when the expert sensing is in the foreground. So you have more of an ESTP kind of representation for a leader. So let's go next to.、Um, I'm going to do this in relative order so that I don't get lost. ISTJ. ISTJ, the duty fulfiller, and INTJ, the scientist. I chose these two because they share the same sixth function, which is introverted thinking. So to be a duty fulfiller, right? That's a very SJ role.、Um, you need introverted sensing and extroverted thinking because、um, you need to be able to execute that un- understand of introverted sensing. In an expert thinking kind of way, so that's why it's called the duty fulfiller.、Um, the scientist, you know, I also like to call the INTJ the wizard, and I like to use the word wizard because it shows more of that archetype rather than the profession. But it's the idea that you take that introvert intuitive insight, and you're turning into some sort of product.、Uh, the scientist creates a product. The wizard creates its,、um, you know, its poofy magic stuff. Um, extra, that's, which is expert thinking stuff.、Um, think about Nikola Tesla, right? He has all these expert thinking invention products as a scientist, as a wizard.、Um, where is the expert thinking in here? Well, if you look, in order to be a good duty fulfiller, you need to have a very complex understanding of how the organization. Works so that you could be able to a- appropriately fulfill the duty in that system, right? So you can see the ESTJ has more of that、uh, the dominant position, the being being the also being the expert thinker, thinking expert thinking and expert sensing strong. Expert thinking is the one holding the reins, right? And being in that top position,、uh, 
you don't need to concern yourself so much with introverted thinking. So what is introverted thinking? Introverted thinking is a very intricate understanding, very intricate understanding of how the systems work. So when you're the ESTJ, the guardian, or the ENTJ, the executive, you're on that very top position, uh, that is not really your role. Your role is to be able to get quickly get people from A to B in a kind of like a mytho- methodological in a very methodological fashion, right? That is using expert thinking. Um, But ICJ in a more of a service-oriented role, they're ones who are under, working under the ESTJ, for instance, is, um, has a very, needs to have a very intricate understanding of the system, the interior thinking system in order to be a good duty fulfiller. INTJ, as a scientist, as a wizard, um, Nikola Tesla, right, needs to um, have a really, in order to be a scientist, you need to have a very intricate understanding of the, you know, the, the scientific system in order to create inventions. But you can see that introverted thinking is channeled out into expert thinking because expert thinking is what is valued in ICJ in INTJ, that is the execution, the duty fulfillment, the creation of science. That's where the interest thinking is channeled out into. So let's go on to the ISFJ, the nurturers, and also um, the INFJ. So they call them the protectors here. Protectors does not really illustrate this concept um, as well. So there's other websites that they use the term the counselor, okay? So let's look at the counselor um, and the nurturer. So nurturer, uh, again, very inspired sensing kind of role, but, uh, and the nurturer and um, the counselor has an expert feeling role. You're, You're having the service for others. You're nurturing somebody, you're counseling somebody. But the word nurturer and counselor connotates a very intimate kind of relationship, a very intimate, long-term, in-depth feeling kind of uh, relationship that's cultivated in order to do this nurturing and counseling. Uh, And that is introverted feeling. So that's introverted feeling brought out in an extroverted feeling kind of way. Um, Compare this with the word caregiver, ESFJ, um, ENTJ, ENFJ, the word the giver. Um, this connotates more of a pure extra feeling, right? You'd be like Santa Claus um, on your sleigh and you're going from house to house giving a lot of gifts. There's not like that extra feeling uh, piece to that uh, role. So, you know, in real life, I know like ENFJ counselors, but, but I'm talking about the archetype again, just to let you know. So let's go on to these next two types, the ISTP and also the ISFP, the mechanic and the artist. So ISTPs and ISFPs are categorized as artisans, but I think they're even more so artisans than the other two artisan types. If you look at it in a very archetypical way, again, I know about ESTP artists, I know about ESFP artists, but like think about the terms mechanic and artist. Those are like the ultimate um, artisans, more so than the terms doer and performer. That's not so much an artisan kind of role. So if you look at that, if you look at artisans, like hardcore artisans, you need to use introverted sensing. You need to have a very refined introverted sensing that's super detailed oriented and super refined in order to be a mechanic, in order to be an artist. You take that introverted sensing understanding in order to manifest an extroverted sensing product. Now, the idea behind the ISTP and ISFP is that they take their introverted sensing understanding, and they manifest it out into expert sensing. There's something about expert sensing, which is about manifestation. Um, As the mechanic, you're taking your intricate, detailed introvert sensing uh, abilities and understanding, and you are channeling out into 
uh, a mechanical project that you're working on. Same thing with artists. Uh, artists do it with that introvert sensing, refined aesthetic understanding in order to create an extrovert sensing kind of product. So that's how that works. You compare that to the terms doer and former. Again, it doesn't really con those terms don't really constant connotate that sense of artisan so much. In order to be an artisan, it's really that combination of introvert sensing and also extrovert sensing. So I'm thinking about uh, cutting this up into two videos. The second video, I'm going to talk about all the rest of the types. I hope you have enjoyed this video.